Good morning all, how are you? Um, how have you enjoyed your first week staying at home from your first week of online lessons? Um, I hope it hasn't been too bad. Um, but yes, looking forward to teaching you guys through um, this medium again this morning. I really enjoyed last week and you guys really commenting, so I really hope that you do that again this morning. And don't forget to sign the register. Okay. Right, so today's lesson is around the Human Rights Act and it forms your criteria 2.1 of your Thousand Words essay. So the aim for this lesson is I'm to um, um, know how to apply the Human Rights Act within healthcare and our learning outcomes are to know what the Human Rights Act is um, and evaluate the application of the Human Rights Act within healthcare. So the assignment brief criteria 2.1 says evaluate the application of human rights within healthcare. So select three aspects listed by the Human Rights and Equality Commission and evaluate their application within healthcare. Okay. So we're going to be looking at the human rights. There are several human rights, but I want you to look at human rights and um, that are relevant within healthcare and then discuss how can these human rights be applied within healthcare what does it look like when we adhere to um when we apply human rights within healthcare so that is your 2.1 okay okay so in 1998 the um human rights and uh, european convention came together um, and they set out the fundamental fundamental rights and freedoms for everyone in the UK. So, for the simple fact that you are human and you live in the UK, you are entitled to um, these human rights at the of fundamental rights and freedom. And it incorporates the rights set out in the European Convention on Human Rights, ECHR. So if you're looking for definitions and if you're looking for where to find those Human Rights Act, Google European Convention on Human Rights. Okay, so it's the ECHR. So it incorporates the rights um, set out by the ECHR that was put into domestic British law. So even though it is popularly known as the Human Rights Act of 1998, it actually came into force in October 2000, in the UK that is. Okay. The rights are um, a set of articles commonly known as the Convention Rights. And these are the rights. Okay, so we have 14 um, there's 16 in total, yeah. So that we have 14 um, human, I'm um, sorry, 14 articles and four protocols. Now you would say, actually, Marvel, it's not 16, it's 18. Uh, but you will see that articles 1 and 13 are missing. And that's because articles 1 and 13 are fulfilled by the simple fact that we have the Human Rights Act. So article 1 is have a Human Rights Act. We have a Human Rights Act, so that cancels it out. Article 13 says, if the Human Rights Act isn't, if people's human rights aren't respected, then there needs to be punishment, which is covered by a fair trial and no punishment without law. So that's why 1 and 13 kind of cancels themselves out. So we have 12 there and four protocols, so a total of 16. Okay, so some of these... Um, Articles and protocols won't be relevant for um, healthcare. For instance, right to free trial. Okay, that might not necessarily be relevant in healthcare. Uh, things like right to marry and start a family might not be relevant in healthcare. Um, right to participate in free elections might not be relevant in healthcare. However, rights like right to life, freedom from torture and inhumane or degrading treatment, right to liberty. Respect for family and primary and fa pri sorry, respect for your private and family life, freedom of expression, freedom of thought, religion, and um, and belief. These are rights that could play out within healthcare setting. Sorry, missed one out there. There we go. Okay. I hope that made sense. 
Okay, so what do the acts do? So the acts are put in place so that, like I said, for the simple fact that you live in the UK and a human, you are entitled to those rights and freedoms. And it means that you can seek justice in any British court if your human rights are being violated. And it means that public bodies such as the NHS must respect your rights. It means that the government cannot violate your human rights as well. So if any kind of government, public body, um, violates your human rights, you can seek justice in as high as the Supreme Court. I think that's American, but you know what I mean. The highest court in a land you can um, appeal to. And it also means that whatever kind of new laws are put in place, they must not violate human rights. So any kind of new laws must be compatible to the convention rights. So if they're setting up any kind of legislature that kind of um, violates what they've already said, set out in those previous rights, then that new law um, can be appealed against. Okay. Right, um, we won't watch this video for the simple fact that it won't let me, but I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put, it down in this column so that you can watch it and it's just um, explaining what the human rights are as it says in two minutes <clears throat> right so human rights within healthcare health is a human right okay simply put I'm f it is important then for health promotion health professionals sorry I've just done a lecture on um, health promotion. So if I say promotion after health, I apologize. <laughs> so it is important for health professionals to know what the human rights are, because if as a health professional, you don't know what they are, you could violate them. And there are serious implications um, for a health professional who violates a person's human, um, human rights. Obviously, we know there are lawsuits, there are costs involved. Um, a healthcare professional could lose their reputation. Um, violating a person's human rights could contribute to or exacerbate poor health. So when people come into healthcare, they're already vulnerable. When you violate their human rights, it could affect their mental health, it could affect their confidence, um, and it could lead to poorer health or even death. Okay, so I've listed out um, just a few implications for not respecting human rights. So you know what those human rights um, are, yeah, so you know what those human rights are. Can you then think about some implications that I've not mentioned there if healthcare professionals don't respect or if they violate people's human rights and then put it as your first activity in the comment section below? Okay, so the first right, the uh, possibly the only right we're going to look at because I want to make this a really short session today is the right to life. Now this is regarded as an absolute right. It means that nobody, not the government, not health professionals, not um, family members, nobody can try to end your life. It also means that governments should take appropriate measures to safeguard life by making laws to protect you and in some circumstances by taking steps to protect you if you are at risk to yourself. Okay? Or taking steps to protect you if your life is at risk as well. So in healthcare, it means that healthcare professionals must respect life and not do anything that would threaten it. Okay, so this has been um, probably in the in the news and in the media over the last kind of decade. This um, it's a really controversial right to life because it calls in question people's right to in some nations euthanasia so if i'm um, prolonging life is at the detriment of the person themselves and it affects their quality of life should people have the right to end their lives themselves um and if you remember oh gosh what his name baby alfie and all that because there have been times where government has stepped in to say actually uh, it might be safer to end this person's life like they did with baby Alfie and they had to appeal and appeal and appeal. So it is an absolute right, but it is controversial. I don't know what you think. Yeah. So have a conversation about it. Let me hear your thoughts in the comments section below.
Right, so your next um, activity is to um, pick two of those rights um, that are relevant within healthcare and discuss the impact of the application of um, that human right in healthcare and the implication of the violation. So what happens when we respect people's right to life? What happens when we make sure that within healthcare people are free from torture and inhumane degrading treatment? What happens when we respect people's liberty? What happens when we don't do that as well within healthcare? And uh, put your feedback again in the activity box below. Okay, so this case study, I'm not going to play here, but I'm going to put a link for you um, so that you can watch it and then answer the corresponding question. So this is your activity two. So what human rights has been highlighted in this case study? What impact does this act have in healthcare? So what is the implication of applying this act in healthcare? What is the implication for the patient? And there's your next one. Same questions again. This is your activity, your final activity. Okay. Now I'm going to put a, um, a section for questions. Please throw as many questions as you can or you've had. Um, and I'll try to answer them. Or I'll ask Shola to answer them. Yeah. Are you up for it, Shola? Yeah. Okay. So. How do you apply this then to your assignment? It's very simple. Like we've just done with the right to life, pick whatever rights that you feel are, as long as you can argue to me that that right can be applied within healthcare. Yeah, I'll listen. So pick three human rights acts that can be used within healthcare. And tell me, how can these rights be applied and what does it look like when healthcare professionals apply these human rights in their delivery of healthcare? What does it look like when doctors, when doctors and nurses respect human life? What does it look like when nurses um, treat their patients with dignity and don't treat them with um, demoralizing, degrading treatment when patients know that they're free from torture? What does it look like when we respect our um, our client, our patient's right to privacy in their family life, to enjoy family life? What does it look like for things like people enjoying their liberty? Okay, so your assignment is saying discuss the application of three Human Rights Act in healthcare. I hope that's helpful and I will I have a chat with you at some point in the comment section and then we'll I'm seeing you after the Easter break. Hope you have enjoyable Easter break indoors. <laughs> okay. Bye bye.